Well, hi there. So in this video, we're going to do some practice related to cross price elasticity of demand, but also price elasticity of demand and demand and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, it's putting it all together. So let's get started. So our first section here says calculate cross price elasticity of demand, then write whether they're substitutes or complements. Now I'll tell you on an exam, sometimes they'll actually say calculate the cross price elasticity of demand, then tell us whether the goods are substitutes, complements, inferior, or normal. And sometimes what they're doing there is actually just testing, like, do you know that cross price elasticity of demand doesn't tell you that they're normal or inferior? Like you could only say substitutes and complements. So sometimes you're gonna have options that just don't make any plain sense. It's okay, that's more of the distractors, right? So make sure you really gotta know just cross price elasticity of demand across two goods, demand of one, price of the other. So here we've got two goods, Xbox prices go down by 5%. And here the positives and negatives do matter. So we're gonna say negative five and Xbox controller demand rises by 10%. And so we would say um, we have a negative two value here and the negative value tells us that they are complements, right? The size of the number actually in these doesn't matter as much. Oscar Mayer raises bologna meat prices by 2%. 2%. So the price is gonna go in the down part, the denominator. Kraft sees cheese demand declined by 5%. And so here we have five over two is negative 2.5. Again, a negative value indicates a complement, cheese and bologna, bologna and cheese. Orange juice prices rise 20% due to a drought. And then apple growers see a 10% increase in demand for apple juice, right? Apple juice. And so we have positive 0.5. And so we would say that these are substitutes. And in fact, we can even say that that's kind of a weak substitute, right? Orange juice and apple juice. Now, number two is all one big honking problem. And this is actually an AP exam problem. So let's, let's see how we do. Gives us a bunch of specific information about elasticity of demand, uh, value of short run, long run of demand for tickets and cross price for popcorn and tickets, income elasticity for the tickets, gave us a bunch of info. So we're gonna need some of that when we go to answer these. If the theater raises prices by 10%, how much will quantity demanded change in the short run? So it tells us in the short run, so we're gonna use the short run value and it gives us to us as 0.8. So we know 0.8 is gonna be equal to the 10% change here in price. And so my quantity demanded change will be 8%. So my answer would be um, 8%. And because it's asking me for how much, I could just say 8% on this. Um, but what I really probably would do is know that these are given as absolute values and this is gonna be a decrease, right? It's gonna be a decrease. That's because this is about price elasticity of demand. And so if the price is going up, I know quantity demanded is going down. B, why is the short run elasticity of demand less than long run elasticity for tickets? And we can say that because consumers, consumers, in the long run will have other substitute products, substitutes. You can just say substitutes. Um, and so, so more responsive to the change in price um, they'll be more responsive to the change in price. And it's really just saying that in the long run, you have more options. If you have the short run and you're like, I gotta go get some entertainment right now, then you're gonna be a little bit more inelastic. C, what will happen to total revenue for movie tickets in the long run if movie ticket prices increase? So we go back up here, the absolute value in the long run is 3.2. So the long run PED equal to 3.2. And so if we have the long run PED is 3.2, if movie ticket prices increase, then because it's because it's greater than um, one, I know that it's elastic, right? Elastic. And so if I know that it's elastic, so if demand is elastic and prices increase, and we could say here, um, just prices increase, we can say therefore total revenue will decrease. It does say explain using the relative percentage changes in price and quantity. Um, and, and realistically up here, you know, we could even say like, if you increased it by a certain amount, you would actually see them fall by that other amount. So um, realistically, we can we can say that that 3.2% means 3.2% change in quantity for every 1% change in the price. 
is really what that's referring to, right? Because 3.2 over one is gonna be 3.2. So we're kind of making reference here to this fact that if I change the price 1%, um, then I know that I'm gonna lose 3% of my sales and that will actually cause my total revenue to fall. Are movie tickets a normal good or an inferior good? Explain. So I'm gonna look back up here. Income elasticity of demand for movie tickets is 0.75. So I would say normal because um, the IED is greater than zero and the IED is equal to 0.75. So just because it is a non-negative number, we know that it's a normal good. Given the increase in the price of movie tickets in part A, what's the effect on the demand for popcorn? Draw a graph to illustrate your answer. So this is gonna be the graph of popcorn, right? Popcorn. And it's just asking me for the demand for popcorn. So I'm just gonna put the demand curve here. And I know that in A, it said the movie, ticket, movie tickets are going up by 10%. Let me look what happens. Cross price elasticity with respect to movie tickets is negative 0.25. So what that means is if I raise the price of the, of the uh, movie tickets, price of the tickets goes up by 10%. That's what it tells me in A, that I'm gonna lose, right? Quantity of popcorn is popcorn is going to go down um, and it's going to go down by 2.5% because the only way we could get negative 0.25 is 2.5 over 10. So I am going to say um, that I am going to demand less popcorn, right? And so shift to the left. And so we would say the effect is that left decrease. And that's because of this negative number that we have up here. So hopefully this helps you understanding a little bit more about the different ways that we could look at elasticities. I'll see you next time. Yeah.